Hi guys, welcome back. So the South Africa squad is out. It's going to get slimmed down as we get towards the Lions tests. From a Northern Hemisphere point of view, most of my viewers from UK and Ireland, um, just a few names that have cropped up I'll go through and then I'm going to name the team that I think is their best team at the moment to take on the Lions. Um, no Marcel Kurtzier, that was a bit of a surprise for me potentially. And in the back row, actually, Dwayne Vermeulen has picked up a, a bit of an injury recently. I believe we don't quite know how bad it is. He's in the squad, but, you know, that's a worry because I think one of the weaknesses potentially is because the South Africans haven't played for two years, they haven't been able to get other guys apart from their World Cup squad game time and see what they're like, even though there's loads of potential in here. We don't quite know if they were to lose guys like Vermeulen. Maybe Dan Dupria could step up from Sale. His brother is there as well. and uh, Didn't get all the brothers, but got the two forwards. Now, like the Dupriers, we know they're really good. They're uncompromising. They've got a decent offload on them. But are they world-class? Along with uh, Leicester's Jasper Wieser, um, the big number eight. I don't know. Maybe they're a bit straight up and down. If they were to play instead of someone like, you know, Vermeulen... I think the Lions would be sniffing a, a bit of an opportunity there. I think they're good players. They're strong players. Not sure what they're going to be like on the world-class stage, but we will see, of course. Um, but most of the big names that we know as Northern Hemisphere fans are in there. All the big second rows are in there. But we don't quite know everyone's injury status. That's going to be a bit of a worry, potentially, in those second row areas. Um, in the backs, uh, really good to see Speckman in. I think he's fantastic. Uh, you know, we might know him from Sevens, uh, the Seven Circuit, so it's good to see him progress. A name that you may thought of retired, but Mornay Stain is back in the South African squad. He keeps churning out good performances. We know his kicking is unbelievable. But if you want to run a game, as in run the ball, you know, make those clever passes, I I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Um, you know, if, if he was to start again uh, instead of Pollard, I think you'd be pretty happy about that. I imagine Yantes will be the uh, backup 10 anyway. Um, in the centres, I was a little bit surprised or disappointed not to see Serfontaine, but there's a lot of good players there who I, I like him a lot. Another kind of blast from the past name, uh, Fran Stain. In as a centre, but he can kick massive goals, play 10, very experienced. Could be really useful on the bench, actually. I could see him being a very good bench player. Um, Jesse Creel is a player I really like. Hasn't quite broken in to be a starting centre, but he could be close. He could be one guy that could push into that starting team as opposed to the World Cup final team. Um, Damien Wilhelms is a really talented uh, fullback slash 10. Hasn't quite broken through on the big stage. Could this be uh, the moment he breaks through? And another guy we might know, from uh, the Northern Hemisphere is Cobus Reinach. Came up to play for Northampton, pretty much instantly became their best player, I think. Just an amazing nine. Getting a bit on in years, but still fantastically talented, um, producing really good performances. I think he would be my backup, actually, uh, scrum half to De Klerk. Really like him a lot. Um, so... I'll put through the, the squad there on the screen. Please let me know any intricacies that you think are interesting in that squad, especially if you're a South African fan. Uh, but straight on to the team that I would pick if I was starting against the Lions right now. And there's no surprises in there, really. There's no particular reason to not pick a lot of this World Cup team. Um, Matawaira, the beast, has retired. So Kitsoff starts and, you know, potentially maybe... He's good enough to start, even if the Beast hadn't retired. Uh, I still go Mbanambi and Marks as your one and two um, hookers. Just such a great combo, isn't it? Bringing Marks on off the bench with that, all that power. Keep Mal Herber in there at tight head. What a rock. Just no classic tight head scrummager. Who goes with Etzebeth, I think, is the question again. Etzebeth, I think, is pretty fit now. I, I, it was like a, a finger injury. But to Jager, Snyman, not sure on their injury status, if they're all fit. I mean, they're in the squad, so let's just assume they're all uh, fit. I'd have uh, Diaga to start, and then I'd have Snyman coming on, probably. Um, really scary. Those three, incredibly scary, will definitely intimidate the Lions, I think, uh, if you have those three in the team. The captain, Khaleesi, is back playing, so he obviously starts as the captain. 
Uh, Peter Steff de Toy is now back, got some games under his belt, so that's great for South Africa. Vimulen, like I said, would absolutely start, of course, but he has picked up that injury. We'll see how that goes. If he doesn't start, I think that's, you know, a definite, um, not a weakness potentially, but an unknown in that South African pack. But whatever they pick, it's going to be big, it's going to be nasty, could definitely have a chance of dominating the Lions. In the back line, again, no surprises. De Klerk and Pollard, just world class. But if they lose them, it gets a little bit thinner, although Reinach are really happy to start. I think he's class. Um, if Pollard goes down, who do you start? Stain, I, I don't think so. I think he's a bit too old. Um, Co you know, Cohen Bosch didn't make the... The team, Yankees, again, he's a good player, but I'm not overly sure about him. Maybe even start uh, Francois Stain in at 10 if Pollard doesn't make it. Um, so anyway, interesting there. Need to keep Pollard fit, but let's assume he will. Um, in the centres, again, can't see past Diolande and Am. Um, Creel, I think, is very close, uh, probably on the bench potentially. Um, we'll see, he might be uh, fighting it out with... Um, Francois staying for a bench spot potentially and the back three is maybe the one change I'd make from a number of teams I'm just not sold on Willie LaRue I know what he was like when he played at uh, Wasps he was a bit flaky sometimes he'd be great but then he'd go missing for a number of games he's been over in um, Japan I believe not sure it's the best preparation but anyway um, I'd probably have Colby in at 15 I think he's just a world-class Colby wing or 15 He's a good kicker. He's good under the high ball. He's a great counter-attacker. Um, and Mpimpi on one wing. And someone like Nkosi on the other wing, potentially. Or you know, someone else, maybe. Um, maybe even Speckman on the other wing as well. But I'm just not sold on Willie LaRue. But let me know your opinion. Anyway, guys, that's my South African team to take on the Lions as it stands. And again, let me know your team. Not sure there's a lot of differentiation in all the teams out there for South Africa at the moment but that might change as the warm-ups get going. Then sneaking maybe under the radar Scotland have actually put out their team for their summer games it is a tour really they are actually going a few places Romania and Georgia which is great they play England A as well first so they've got three games three very interesting games um, I do hope they use England A as an A game rather than a warm-up for their test side because there's loads of young players in this squad that I think they should just expose to international rugby um, at a slightly lower level potentially maybe or a less high stakes level I should say and then some of them are going to go home and then the test team will play Romania and Georgia. Mike Blair's head coach, so good for him, gives him a taste of head coach duty. Uh, now Gregor Townsend's obviously off with the Lions. Also eight Scots on Lions duty, which is obviously um, not usual compared to the previous tour. So that's good because it gets those experienced players uh, playing a high level, but it gives more space for others to come in. So I do like that. Um, 17 uncapped players. So I think it's about 17 uncapped players. So lots of potential to look at guys. Um, who am I really interested in seeing? Well, Jamie Dobby is a guy that everyone's talking about. I really rate him. I think he's played at Glasgow age 18. He runs more like an outside back to me rather than kind of a scamperer like George Horn. Looks the real deal. Highly rated, like I said, and by highly rated by me as well. He's not going to be a small nine. I think he could be a um, really good player um, for Scotland. Along with a fly half partner, uh, potentially Ross Thompson. Good kicker, good passer, really good basics. Um, I'd like those two to start in the A match, actually. I'm not sure they'll be that bold, but I'd like to those guys to start, play most of the match, and then maybe those two would, would then go home for the other two internationals, to be honest. But yeah, I'd like to see them uh, have a go, particularly Dobby. Um, Richie, I'd just like to mention him. Jamie Richie is given the captaincy. I think that's a really good call. Had an excellent Six Nations, leads by example, you know, really gets stuck in. Plus, I prefer a captain being in the pack, if at all possible. And he really needs to keep his phone turned on because he may get a call up for the Lions if there's an injury. He's that good. So he goes as captain. That's great. Um, Magnus Bradbury is a guy who, you know, threatened to break through as Scotland's starter. Hasn't quite happened to him, form, injury, etc. This is a big opportunity. You know, Romania and Georgia, a big physical team. So if he can impose himself on those guys, you know, that really helps him to try and get back into the fold, if you like. 
George Turner again has a great chance to you know cement his place as a number one hooker now look the real deal in the Six Nations and maybe even he's on the backup list for the Lions who knows and young Alex Craig only two caps I know but I like the way he moved uh, when he came on for Scotland in the Six Nations I think he's got uh, serious potential so this is a good um, opportunity for him I hope he's retained into the Romanian Georgia squads but I don't know maybe we should get a chance to finally see George Horn play at nine for Scotland. I know he's got other competition in there, steals in there, but I'd prefer Horn to start along with Adam Hastings, who's in good form. So those two for me should be the you know Romania and Georgia half backs. Um, and then uh, Sione Tupelotu comes in straight in. He is, does qualify through his family, um, and he's a centre that could really be a point of difference. For Scotland, I think he's around 24 now, uh, so great age, power pace, but he can play a bit as well. He could absolutely be a fixture in the Scotland side if he plays well in the summer games. Cameron Redpath is injured again, which is a real shame, but to Peloto could definitely take advantage of maybe a gap in the centre um, and maybe even become a starter. So anyway, anyway, guys, let me know uh, what you think. Those are the guys there. I didn't quite click onto the last slide. Let me know what you think of the Scotland squad, who you think should start for certain games, who should play against England A, maybe who should go home afterwards. Do you think they're strong enough games? Um, I would say, yeah, I think it's about right, especially with eight Scots uh, being away on Lions duty. Uh, looking forward to that one. And let me know what you think about that. And, of course, the South African team. And I will catch you guys next time.